that time again. It's time to record some memories. If you're new to Paper and Glam, I'm Lisa Marie, and I'm so excited that you're here. Today we're going to walk through a system of memory planning I created that's just a fun, effortless way to get some memories into your planner that might not be recorded otherwise. If you're like me, your planner can tend to be more about to-do lists and getting things done and where you need to be and when, but I like to make sure I take some time to also incorporate some of the memories that I made during the month. So let's do it. All right, if you're new to the memory planning series, this is what we're going to be creating together. And if you tuned into January's memory plan with me, then this looks both familiar and a little different. So I did rework my layout some, adding my books read and my words to live by. I made a little divider with some washi here and I'm so happy with the way it turned out. I'm loving this nice blank canvas and I'm so excited to chat about February with you. So here's our starting page. I'm gonna get a couple sheets out of my February sticker binder. So the first is the Glam February memory dashboards, then my circles and uh, some washi. So three sheets and I'll link all these down below. The first thing I'm gonna do is count eight lines down and place my washi. I'm going to be using this gingham washi because I think that'll look really pretty with the February header. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right there, I should have grabbed my washi first. Okie doke. Beautiful. Next, I'm going to apply my circles. So I'll be using these first four here, although the patterns just repeat. So you can use whichever four you want. And I'm just gonna center them between this top line or I guess the second to the top line and the washi below. Just eyeball it, it's gonna be just fine. So put that one on the end and I'll do the other end. So I'm gonna use this trusty ruler to help me line these up some. I'm trying to make the patterns <laughs> match so it flows right into each other. And then some fun hearts, try to space out the florals. See, I'm not gonna put this one down too firmly in case I need to move it a little bit. When I get the middle one on, oh, I do need to move it just to taste. It's a little too far over to the right. Okay, that looks pretty straight. Now I'm gonna put on the February header. It's gonna take it off carefully so I don't rip her. It's beautiful styled February. And I like to line it up at the top here with this line in the two circles. Oh, but my, my bee is going over the top. That's not gonna work with our big swoopy bee. All right, we'll move it down to the in between here so it's not over the top of the page. There we go. Okay, I'll have to work a little with this number, but that's okay. Maybe scoot it to the right a little bit if you want to learn from my planning here. Next, I'm going to put the washi on the bottom. And let's see, how many lines do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's eight from the bottom. And I'll use these hearts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right here, that's a wrap on circles and washi. So I'm gonna put those back in my sticker binder. All right, now we're just working with this sheet here. And uh, I like to use memories and words to live by and books read. We'll put memories on first. And uh, I think I just centered it. Yep, just right in the middle of the washi. All right, beautiful. And then I'm gonna use some of these decorative hearts. So I think I'll use the red hearts on either side of this memories banner here. Use red since the banner's pink and the washi behind it is blue. And you know, it's February, our month of love. 
Next, I'm gonna add some cord glam to these top circles here. So I'm gonna grab the gym bag from Gym Glam, the book from Glam Reads, and then the Instagram and the YouTube play button from Glam Vlog or Vlog. Instagram's on both. And then the vlog is sold out, but I'm hoping we can update it in the near future. So let's see the gym bag use this gingham gym bag. You guys like how everything coordinates? It makes my type awesome heart happy. So that's how many workouts I got in. And then reads, I'll use our February color for how many books I read here. And then flip to the back. There's Legally Blonde. And grab the play symbol. And grab the Instagram logo. Okay, that's that. Our layout's coming together. Next I'm gonna use these hearts to embellish around the top and embellish inside my circles. Then I'll count up how many videos I got up, how many Instagram posts I got up, and how many workouts I got in. All right, so I got my hearts down and now I am just filling in how I'm doing on the habits that I'm tracking. So workouts, got 10 in this month, and then I read three books and we'll chit chat about those in just a minute. And then for Instagram, we got 12 Instagram posts up. And then for YouTube, we did 10 videos in February. And actually, you know what? That doesn't count book club. So we actually got 11 YouTube videos up in February, which seems like a lot, but that's what it said. That's amazing. So we had a pretty good month all around for social media and books reading and workouts. What habits do you guys track every month? What I'm gonna start tracking next month is my God and Glam reading and uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna evict one of these <laughs> or um, I might evict Instagram for just like Lent because I really want to get my God and Glam reading in every day. It gets, um, and if you're new, God and Glam is the Bible study for Paper and Glam and there's a video on it up on this under start here if you're curious, but readings do get a little bit heavier during Lent. So it's kind of more, it's more of a five day a week reading plan during the rest of the year. But for Lent, it's, it's definitely more of a every, every day type thing to keep it, um, to keep up with it. And I, yeah, I really committed to just kind of going straight through Lent. So anywho, um, next let's put down our prompts. We're a third done. So I, so for this, we added more prompts this year. So I actually remove three that I'm not going to be using. So I keep a notes app on my phone with my memory planning so that I can get myself organized when I'm like in line at the checkout counter and whatnot. So let's see, which ones am I not using? I marked off which ones I am going to remove this month. So I'm gonna remove reading just cause we're going to track that at the end. We're actually gonna list out the books and then I'm going to remove pinning. I, I guess I was pinning things, but that's like not one of the things that I'm going to, <laughs> I'm gonna use what I was pinning is um, stuff for our summer collection. It was same as last year, but, or excuse me, last month, but this year we're doing like a really fun glam summer that's like a really colorful pool party. And then the seasonal extra for July is um, beauty. So we're we were just like looking at a bunch of different stuff to use for beauty and just working on our inspiration. So I think, let's see, I will also remove going. I didn't really go anywhere too, too new. I did check out a new church, but I'm gonna stick with my my current church. And let's see, we'll put down loving. So I'm gonna put these prompts down and then we will chit chat about the stuff that I've been loving this month. And I'd love to hear what you guys have been loving. You keep me fresh. So I leave room to write with three lines and just put it down. And then um, keep rolling. I'm gonna do 
the planning on the other end just so it's easier to keep things to keep things aligned without kind of a guide for those middle prompts. So learning. So putting these this first line down is a little bit like cutting the first slice of pie. It's like I just kind of place it down gently and then move them over till I get it nice and centered. And if you're not type awesome like me, just eyeball it. I don't know. It's gonna look put together in the end. All right, that's that's pretty much nailed it. All right, then down below we'll put wearing. All right, so all my memory planning prompts are down. Next I'm going to put their matching icons down. And we have this heart. I swear our stickers are really easy to get off the page. <laughs> Just not on video sometimes. <laughs> all right, so we have loving with this pretty little floral heart. Learning, I'm gonna use the open book here. And then we have savoring. I like to use the candle, but you could really use these kind of in any order at your discretion. Then we have planning and wearing. We have a little shirt. Watching this fun Glamflix remote, which is also on our Glamflix planner stickers. If you wanna track some of your fave shows in this season, then we have listening, fun little iPad or phone. I always say that, um, iPod. <laughs> All right, listening. And then singing, there's a fun microphone. Okay, for praying, we have this little sun and open Bible. Then celebrating, we've got a cute cake slice. It's making me kind of hungry. It's almost lunchtime here at Glam HQ. Eating, we've got a cutlery set in monthly colors and drinking a fun PNG cup. All right, so now we can just fill this in and chit chat about monthly faves. All right, I'll zoom in a little bit. All right, so I've been loving auto brewing my coffee in the morning. Setting it for 6 a.m. makes me so excited to get up. And I'm such a morning person, I'm always really excited to wake up. But using my coffee maker as an alarm is pretty much the best way I can think of to wake up. It's also one less thing to do in the morning so I can enjoy the quiet time in the morning, whether I'm reading my Bible or reading for book club or just like planning the day. I love waking up super early. Um, I usually wake up between like four and five, but I set my coffee maker to six, so that way if I do end up sleeping in, it wakes me up, and I'm just like not a fan of waking up with an alarm, but I don't know, even the sound of it, right, like alarm, <laughs> is alarming, uh, but the coffee maker, it's like just a really graceful way to wake up. All right, so that's fun. I don't know why I've never used that function before. Probably because I just don't like waking up artificially, so to speak. All right, learning. So my learning comes from a song I've had on repeat this month, and it's called Easy, and it's by a new artist I discovered called Sarah Reeves. Have you guys heard of her before? So she has an album called Easy Never Needed You, and that's really a just a sentiment that has stuck with me, stuck with me lately. Because, you know, as a Christian, we believe that, you know, when you're doing your best to walk with God and, you know, share who he is and the difference that he's made in your life, you do become a target for the enemy. And if you've been a Christian for a while, you kind of start accumulating a lot of crazy stories, both, you know, for better and, and for worse. But the good things about those seasons that might be a little more on the <laughs> or worse end is that it's in those seasons that I find myself growing uh, closer to the Lord and seeing the way that he provided, even if I didn't feel it in those seasons. It's been a rough couple years for me and for me and God, or at least with my relationship um, with him. And there's, there's just some really great tracks on this Easy Never Needed You album that really talk about that. Um, just when it's hard to trust God when you can't see his hand. 
And yeah, I added all my favorites from that album to the God and Glam playlist if you want to give it a listen. On to a lighter prompt, which is savoring. So my guilty pleasure is Siesta Key. I love it. It just reminds me of being young and why I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in my 20s anymore. But the best part of Siesta Key are Spencer Pratt's recaps of the episode. Oh my gosh, I look forward to them. I save the episode for Saturdays and I watch it and read the recaps and I'm just like over here cackling. They're hilarious and yeah, Spencer's really funny and you know, is Hills alum. He um, has interesting perspectives on everything and you kind of see things you don't really see um, from the behind the scenes perspective. And are you guys excited for the Hills reboot? I actually didn't start watching the Hills until I was really homesick in Denver and I was planning to move home, but it just really wasn't working out. And I started watching it to just to feel a little, little bit of home. My mom was living in LA at the time and, um, I didn't really understand why it was a phenomenon when it was on. I was there a few times when they were filming it um, here in LA back in the day, back in my, my first tenure in LA. And I didn't really understand it. I was like, why are they just following people around when they eat? Like, <laughs> and talk about boys, it's weird. Um, anyway, so I really got it though, the second time around. I thought it was for a reality show really well done. All right, so I've loved it for planning planning our Instagram editorial on my Apple TV. Like it's fun to just screen mirror and put it up on the big TV and get some thoughts from the team on like what looks best on our feed. We spend a lot of time finessing our feed. I probably would get twice the posts up if I wasn't so obsessed with the way the feed looks. Oh my gosh, type awesome problems. Who can relate? <laughs> so I've been filling this out off camera. I'm wearing, I was having trouble writing and talking at the same time. <laughs> um, I've been wearing this pink Soul Cycle sweatshirt constantly. It's the one that has the crisscross front. I wore it in the Valentine Home Tour and you guys gave me a lot of sweet compliments. I have been watching Z on Amazon. It's a series that is uh, um, it's an adaptation of Z, The Beginning of Everything. It's a book about Zelda Fitzgerald. And we read it as a companion to the Paper and Glam book club um, when we read Gatsby, which was September of 2016. So one of my favorite books, Fitzgerald's probably my favorite author since The Great Gatsby is my favorite book. And it was really good. It was really historically accurate, at least from what I know. And the book was really pretty accurate based on what we know of, of his life and Zelda's life. So that was really good. It has Christina Ricci in it. It did get canceled after one season, but it's got 10 really, really beautiful, fun episodes. And then I also watched a really good documentary on Netflix called Heal. And it really just outlines everything I've learned about health and healing um, in the past couple of years and the journey that I've been on. So when we started talking about this in vlog 43, a lot of you said you wanted to chit chat more about kind of my thoughts on health and just kind of learn more about um, my somewhat radical perspective on it. But this documentary just, wow, it, it nailed it. It had, has a lot of doctors being interviewed and people who have um, healed themselves from things that and they shouldn't have come back from. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful, well done documentary. Singing, I've been singing the Hailey Seinfeld, I think is how you say it, or Steinfeld, not sure. That's um, this song called Back to Life. I'm kind of, you know, along the healing end, coming into a season where I kind of feel like I'm coming back to life. So it feels like a appropriate song for my personal soundtrack. I put it on the Paper and Glam playlist if you want to listen to it. Listening, I've been listening to a book called The Air You Breathe on Audible, and it's um, it's kind of a doorstop of a book. I wouldn't say I recommend it. Um, it's very, very, unless you recommend, quote unquote, beautifully written, um, very character driven books. Um, it's probably not for everyone, but it was a book of the month book and I, you know, it was a good challenge. I'm glad I read it and it was very beautifully written. 
Next, I'm um, eating. So I've been eating these sandwiches from Trader Joe's. They're called turkey apple cheddar sandwiches. They're fairly new. How I got hooked on them was Chelsea brought it for lunch one day and oh my gosh, totally looked so delicious. I got one the next time I was at Trader Joe's and I've been eating one like once a week ever since. <laughs> so good. Drinking, I've been drinking Red Velvet Coffee, so Bones Coffee, my favorite coffee company. I'll put a link down below for $5 off your first order if you're curious about Bones, but they just do really fun seasonal flavors and uh, the Red Velvet is just so fun and good for Valentine's Day. And they just released their next limited edition flavor. I don't know if it's limited edition or just new, but it's Cookies and Dreams. So I actually just got that one in the mail before I started the video. So still on my bones kick, thanks to you guys. Thanks to Ashley, who is the one who introduced it to me by leaving a comment in the video. But there's lots of gals who love it in our seasonal living group too. Celebrating, so celebrating, I have been just really celebrating having work-life rhythm for maybe the first time. Uh, and I really don't like the term work-life balance, you guys, because I feel like it's a myth. <laughs> but I have decided it's gonna be called work-life rhythm for me. And maybe that's a thing people say. But, uh, you know, when you say something and you're like, that's a really good idea, and then you realize that other people have said that before too. It's like one of those things where ideas tend to kind of move around and th there's actually a lot about this in the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert but it's how it's they talk about just their she talks about the reason why like certain people will have the same thought at the same time and then you know it's like who was first but ideas just kind of they just kind of rise and fall it's interesting anyway so work life for them having weekends off has just been amazing and just to be at a point a point where um I have that that luxury is just good to be back I've kind of just gone heads down on paper and glam the first the last few years so that's been amazing I've only worked one weekend um on paper and glam and I mean I have I have been working but there hasn't been things that like absolutely needed to be done it was more just like inspiration struck and I went hard on something, but it wasn't necessarily that like there were deadlines, like ride or die deadlines, you know what I mean? All right, and lastly, for praying, this is another Sarah Reeves song. This is comes from her most popular song, and it's, I think it's called I Want You, but, um, or I Just Want You, but it's, it's just a song that kind of embodies my approach to dating and Oh my glam, my camera died, y'all. All right, so where we left off is um, the song I Want You. So um, it really just embodies my approach to dating and I was saying it's been kind of a rough road or tough road. Not necessarily that I have a bunch of crazy bad dating stories, I really don't, uh, but just, you know, it's a long wait waiting for the one that God has for you. And the song says, um, if you're not in it, I don't want it. I just want you. So, you know, talking to God, if God's not in it, I don't want it. I just want you. So it's kind of the prayer of my heart. And if you guys are chronically single gals like me and you feel like you're the last of your friends to get married, I am right there with you. All right, words to live by. These come from one of my favorite people, Mr. Gary Vee. I can't stop talking about him in every video, but he said on his podcast, uh, to have a special life, you have to do special things. And that usually means doing a lot of work and loving it. So a newer member of Team Glam uh, said that to me the other day. And I just, um, she said that I had had a special life. And I think that's, that's definitely true. Um, but it's also required a lot of sacrifice too. And, you know, like all blessing comes with, comes from, you know, a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice. So, um, when Gary V, um, said that I was like, yes, that, um, and then for books read, I read The Air You Breathe, which we just talked about. Um, I read Swipe Right. And that's a book about Christian dating, which is so good. It's called um, Swipe Right, The Life and Death um, Power of Sex and Romance. So good. It's so amazing. Um, I get lots of emails from you guys asking for recommendations for kind of Christian dating books. So this one is really good. I think my reigning fave along with Swipe Right is The Weight, which I can link down below since we chatted about that a little bit in this video. And then lastly, The Wedding, which was our monthly 
our annual love story for the month of February. So in February for our book club, we read we read a love story. And if love stories aren't your thing, that's okay, because March is our thriller month. <laughs> so uh, hard right <laughs> into a murder mystery. So that is uh, my layout for the month. That's a wrap on this month's memory plan with me. I hope it gave you some fun ideas for recording your memories and maybe got you a song or two to listen to or a book for your to be read list. In housekeeping news, we have the April collection that just went live. So if you are like me and you are so ready to for spring, I have some serious glam Easter for you. So that's up. We are going to be glamming so hard, packing it up and getting it on the way home to you in the next couple weeks. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Just gearing up for a glam Easter planning and hanging out with all of you on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about it. So until next time, sisters, thank you so much for hanging with me. I will be back soon, and I am wishing you a beautiful close to your February and a beautiful start to March. Bye.